Hey guys, hope you're great. Today we're going to do a bit of a bike check, but rather than doing a sort of typical bike check, we're going to focus a little bit more on the sort of age-old question and myth that we have about these bikes and just how light they really are. So we're going to go through all the parts and the spec that I'm running on this bike. Um, we're going to just go through the weights of each individual part and we're going to add them all up and uh, get to a final figure of what this bad boy actually weighs. To get things started, I'm going to have to be referring to my little cheat sheet. I've done a bit of research this morning on the internet to get a breakdown of just about everything on this bike and what it weighs. I'm actually going to start off with the frame. I'm running the uh, 2019 Inspired 4 Play team frame. It's aluminium and according to their website, the frame is coming in at around about 1.88 kilos. Pretty light, but not crazy light. To compare that to, like, say, my mountain bike, um, the Santa Cruz 5010, with a shock, I think it's about 2.25 or something, so a little bit lighter, but if you're to take the shock out of it, it's probably pretty comparable to the actual frame itself. The forks are the Inspired 4 Play team, and they are 930 grams. So again, pretty light, but not insanely light. We need the frame and forks to still be really strong. It's all about just getting that kind of balance between the weight and strength. The headset is about 120 grams, the whole integrated headset. The brake levers and calipers come in at around about 280 grams each, just over a half a kilo for the brakes, which I don't know, seems quite a lot, but again, on the trials bike, and we're riding the Magura MT7 brakes, need to be super strong and super powerful to handle what we throw it, hop it up to the back wheel, on the front wheel and uh, yeah, just need a lot of power just like the downhill boys do. To move on to the cockpit, the handlebar and stem I'm running, I'm running a trial tech stem. It comes in at about 172 grams. So again, pretty light, but not crazy light. Just need to make sure that thing doesn't fail on us when we're doing big drops. I'm actually running the reverse deviant handlebars and they are 358 grams pretty strong, nice and light, but not ridiculously light that they're gonna start breaking on us. So I'm running the Danny McCaskill lizard skin grips, not much weight to them, but it still adds up. And they are about 85 grams for the pair. Probably not quite as heavy as double-sided lock-on grips, but a little bit heavier than just a regular pair of foam grips with no lock-on knuckles. Right, we're gonna make this as accurate as possible. So we're even gonna count the headset spacers. I have got two 50 mil headset spacers, and according to our research, they weigh four grams each. So not much weight there, but we're gonna keep it very scientific. The seat, I'm running the Inspired tripod seat with medium padding and that is coming in at 200 grams, which I actually think is quite a lot for a seat considering we basically don't use it. So maybe we need to start looking at that and as a way of potentially saving weight off this bike. The uh, seat post itself weighs 176 grams. My one might be a little bit lighter than that because I've actually cut it down a little bit, but for argument's sake, let's just go 176 grams because that's what the production one is. So the cranks in this bike are the SRAM GX Eagle 170mm. I've been running these for a while. They're super stiff and super strong. They are weighing in at 670 grams and I'm running those cranks with the SRAM GXB bottom bracket and that is 115 grams, give or take. They would usually come with a 32 tooth chainring, but I'm running the 22 tooth inspired integrated chainring and bash guard, and it weighs 70 grams. Again, pretty light, but not crazy light. It's got to stand up to the abuse that we put it through, not only just on big drops, but also just in taking actual impacts when things don't quite go to plan and you come up short and smash your bash guard into some nice walls. The pedals I'm running are the reverse Escape Pro 2 pedals and they are weighing in at a total of 360 grams. So again, pretty light but not crazy light. Pedals are some things I've had with difficulty with in the past with braking on me, so it's good to have a nice balance between strength and weight for those. To move on to the rest of the drive, the chain is a KMC Z610X. Again, like with the brakes, the chain is so important when it comes to trials. It's all about having as much reliability in your chain as possible. It's definitely one thing that I would never try and scrimp on weight with because it's pretty much one of my biggest fears is your chain breaking at the wrong time when you're doing gap jumps or some pretty high stuff. That comes in at about 315 grams. Might be a little bit less than this bike because I've cut it down a little bit. So it'll be around about 300 grams, give or take. So just to move to the back of the drive, I'm running a single speed on this hub. It is a 16 tooth trial tech cog. It's weighing in at about 44 grams. And we've got the single speed spacer kit. It's going to be weighing in around 14 grams. I know it seems irrelevant, but we're going to be as scientific as possible on this test and get things as accurate as we can. 
and then I guess we need to include the chain safe protector which is approximately 30 grams. The uh, chain tensioner is a trial tech chain tensioner but it was included in the frame weight so we can ignore that for now. So now to move on to the wheels, we'll start with the rear. We've got the Hope Pro 4 rear hub and that is 461 grams for that. So I've been lucky enough to get my hands on some uh, limited edition 24 inch Santa Cruz reserve rims. So they're basically 24 inch versions of the 27.5 and 29 inch uh, rims that they have on a lot of their full builds. I couldn't actually find an exact measurement for these because they're not actually available to the public but I've guesstimated that they're about 425 grams each so again pretty light but not insanely light because they're still super strong and we've literally put these things through the paces and uh, yeah no dents no buckles so they've been absolutely awesome the spokes and nipples we've worked out to be about 200 grams per wheel I'm actually running tubeless on this setup, so whilst we don't have tubes, you still need to make a little bit of an allowance for sealant. I've been running the uh, muck off puncture sealant and I've been putting around about 150 to 200 mil on that. So for argument's sake, we'll say 200 grams in sealant in the rear tire. I'm running the Magura 200 mil rotors and according to our research, they are 170 grams, including the six rotor bolts. We've also got brake adapters to take these from an IS to post mount and they are approximately 148 grams each. Moving on to the front wheel, we'll be a little bit lighter in the rear, mostly down to the hub. The uh, Hope Pro 4 front hub weighs in at about 190 grams. Again, spokes and nipples will be about 200 grams. Another 173 grams for the rotor and rotor bolts. Uh, and on both of those wheels, we've got identical Air King McCaskill Continental tires, and they come in at almost exactly 800 grams a piece, so 1.6 kilograms in tires, which again, is actually pretty heavy, but just to go back to it, we put these things through a lot of extreme conditions so whilst we could probably make them a little bit lighter it just wouldn't be worth it we'd just be getting flats all the time so there you have it this thing comes in at about 10.4 kilos maybe not quite as light as people are expecting but yeah again pretty much just comes down to the age old thing it's all about getting that balance between strength and uh, lightness you could probably shave about a kilo off this bike with a few certain tweaks but the light you go you just start running into problems with reliability and when you're putting your bikes into some extreme conditions and up high you just really do not want that thing to be failing on you so i think with where we've got at the moment it's a pretty good balance you do get trials bikes like the sort of more traditional competition trials bikes as light as like 7.5 to 8.5 kilos but as soon as you start doing some big stuff on that it's going to start breaking if you compare it to my santa cruz 5010 i think it's about 12.5 so two kilos lighter which is obviously significant but not that much by the time you start thinking about sort of shocks and uh, suspension parts and stuff so yeah thanks again for watching the video if you do want to see some more videos um, click subscribe and we'll catch you guys in the next one